Welcome back. Domain 2 Technologies and Tools. This is a continuation of last video. So network security components. So in this video we're going to see three components: firewalls, intrusion detection and prevention systems, IPS, I, uh, IDS, IPS, virtual private networks. Firewall. What is firewall? So the definition of firewalls. A firewall is a network security device that monitoring incoming and outgoing network traffic and permits to permi permits or block data packets based on a set of security rules. It is it, it its purpose is to establish a barrier between your internal network and incoming traffic from external source such as internet in order to block malicious traffic like virus and hackers. How does a firewall work? So, a firewall carefully analyzes in incoming traffic based on pre-established rules and filters traffic coming from unsecured or suspicious source to prevent attacks. Firewall go traffic at your computer's entry point called ports, which is where information is exchanged with external devices. For example, source address like 192.168.1.1 is allowed to reach destination 192.168.2.1 over the port 22 or port uh, 33 you know so just uh, as an example so just give you another example so think of IP address as houses and port numbers are rooms within the house only trusted people are allowed to enter the house at all then it's further filtered so that the people within the house are only allowed to access certain rooms depending on if there if there are the owner a child or guest the owner is allowed to any room while children and guests are allowed in, a, in into a certain set of room is a specific post so it is a small example I would say so types of firewalls so the types of firewall is a packet filtering proxy filter and stateful packet inspections so there are software and hardware firewall so each each uh, format serves a different each format uh, serves a different but important purpose a hardware firewall is physical, like broadband routers, stored between your network and gateway. Yes, software firewall is internal, a program on your computer that works through port numbers and applications. These allows are cloud-based firewalls, known as firewall as a service, FAS. One benefit, one benefit of cloud-based firewall is, is that they can grow with your organization and similar to hardware firewall do well the per perimeter security so the packet filtering firewalls a packet filtering firewall is a management program that can block network traffic IP protocol and IP address and a port number this type of firewall is the most basic from most basic form of protection and is meant for smaller networks while packet filtering firewall can be helpful, they also have limitations. Because all web traffic is allowed, it doesn't block web-based application, uh, web-based attack. So you need additional protection to disting, uh, distinguishing between friendly and malicious web traffic. Proxy firewall. So the proxy firewall is act uh, act as an intermediary. Is application proxy and uh, web proxy so as you can see there so there's a three ma main part the uh, bulletproof so th this packet uh, proxy firewall filters network traffic at the application level so unlike basic firewalls the proxy act as intermediary between two end system so the the client must send a request to to the fi uh, firewall where it is then evaluated against a set of security rules and then per permitted or blocked. Most notably, proxy firewalls 
monitor traffic for layer 7 protocols such as HTTP and FTP and use both stateful and deep packet inspection to detect, uh, to detect malicious traffic. So and then stateful, multi, uh, stateful is a uh, multi-layer inspection firewall. So it, we can also say that stateful packet inspection. So these filter packets are the network transport and application layer comparing them against known trusted packet like network address uh, uh, sorry next generation firewall next generation firewall and then uh, stateful also examine the entire packet and only allow them to pass if they pass each layer individually so this firewall examine packet to determine the state of the communication to ensure all initiated communication is only taking place with the trusted source. So as I explained before, so intelligent analyzed data flow and traffic pattern. So this is a bulletproof of uh, important um, uh, the main main role. So firewall rules. So the firewall rules determines what traffic your firewall allows and what is blocked. Examine the control information in the individual packets and either block or allow them according to the criteria that you define. Control how the firewall protects your network from malicious programs and unauthorized access. Managing your firewall rules across your device and throughout your network is critical to network security. So application firewalls, an application is a type of firewall that governs traffic to, from, or by an application or service. Application firewalls or application layer firewalls use a series of configured policy to determine whether to block or allow communication to or from an app. How does it work? Traditional firewalls control data flow to, flow to and from the CPU, examining each packet as it passes through. An application firewall takes it further by controlling the executions of file or code by specific applications this way even if an intruder gains entry to a network or server they cannot execute malicious code it works uh, it works at uh, layer 7 it functions at layer 7 of the OSA model so WAF is protect is a small definition so protect web application from known attack examples buffer overflow so the next one, IPS, IDS and IPS. So what is IDS and IPS? Not all IT professionals are clear on IDS versus IPS, you know, even though these concepts are important for overall network security. Think of think think of it this way. Security alerts and response go together. A burglar a burglar alarm won't do you much good if it doesn't somehow deter crime in progress on the other hand having the cops having the cops show up at your house won't help you if it falls along sometime an alert is enough sometime you need well calibrated response you can essentially translate this idea to IT security to understand the function of IDS and IPS So what is IP, IDPS? It is important to note intrusion detection system and intrusion prevention or uh, system are both important part of networking integrity and include concepts that you may want to consider for IT security actions and decisions. Sometimes the systems overlap and sometimes they are combining or referred to, uh, re refer to together or uh, as IDPS. Although IPS is becoming a more dominant security method it is important to be familiar with the both in this article in this uh, slide you can see so the bullet bulletproof uh, you can see that intrusion intrusion any activity or act, uh, actions that attempts to undetermine or compromise the confidentiality integrity or availability of resource and the intrusion detection prevention system IP, IP, IDPS like a bulk, what what I explained earlier host based on individual systems network based on the network border so there are two 
types active and uh, passive response and active response as you see as you can see in the picture right side so the left side is, uh, left side of the picture is the IDS so which is is detection and reporting to management system and the right side is the IPS is a prevention so is there's a this is a good example of the picture so active response is a determining de process or sessions configuration configuration changes deceptions active response example uh, attack attacker believes that the attack is success succeeding while the systems monitor the activity and potential redirect the attacker to honey attacker to to your honeypot uh, or logging system so what does an id ids do what does an ips do so the ids so the first one in the picture you can see is an ids monitor uh, your network for possible dangerous activity including malicious act and violent of security protocol when such a problem is detected and IDS alerts the administrators but doesn't necessarily take any other actions there are several types of IDS and several method of detection employed uh, needs and keeps meaning so network uh, network intrusion detection systems and host intrusion detection system. We will talk about this later. So uh, this is uh, oh, so we need we need to explain this more so that we can understand. So types of uh, the second one, IPS. So IPS is uh, you can see the pictures uh, is identifying suspicious activity, logging security events, and attempting to block intrusion. Uh, intrusions or limit damage report intrusion attempts some experts consider intrusion prevention uh, prevention system to be subset of intrusion detection indeed all intrusion prevention begins with the intrusion detection but security system can go one step further and act to stop ongoing and further acts when an IPS detect as uh, an attack it can reject data packets give command to firewall and even serve uh, even s uh, severe air connection IDS and IPS are similar in how they are implemented and operate IP IPS can also be uh, network or host based and can operate on signature or anomaly basis IPS IDS anal analytics false positive and false negative so false positives occurs when your typical or expected behavior is identified as irregular or malicious and false negatives occurs when an alert that should have been generated didn't happen so nits and nips so nits a network intrusion detection so monitor packet moving into and out of a network or subset of a network it could monitor all traffic or just a selection to catch security threats. A NITS compares potential intrusions to no abnormal or harmful behavior. This option preferred for enterprise as it's going to provide much broader cover coverage than host-based system. And then NIPS. NIPS is a uh, A network-based ideas that takes active uh, step to halt pre or prevent an intrusion is called network intrusion prevention system when operating in this mode they are considered active system needs a NIPS so below is a outline of NIPS material cover so you can see on the, uh, material covered on the exams uh, the capture exam so each section will be covered uh, through the lens of both NIPS and NIPS. So let me explain this. Uh, what is a uh, signature burst? So the signature burst refer to predetermines and pre-configured attack patterns rules that I that identify attacks on web applications. Their components, both NIPS and, and NIPS, can use signature burst detections, but when follows a difference for both. NIPS operate by monitor. So as, as explained earlier, 
uh, all traffic to the comes in and it looks for suspicious packet based upon the signature it used then if suspicious packet matches up to uh, up to your signatures it will detect the threats so nips monitors and detects just like nips but it will then take appropriate follow up actions to take care of uh, take care of the threat so it should it should be noted the zero day attacks to uh, do not get detect because they are not made into signature at a point in time the second one is a heuristic behavioral based so this one heuristic and uh, heuristic or behavioral based nips is a, is the best nips and nips operate by comparing incoming traffic and packet against a pre established baseline of normally experienced behavior of the respective organizations nits behave nits is a being the passive system will just detect suspicious behavior by comparing to the baseline nips which focus on prevention will go one step further and take some action to either stop or mitigate the potential threat so the third one is anomaly based so anomaly based nits and nips or where a touch of artificial intelligence comes into play when anomaly based nips and nip uh, nits and nips uh, do your incoming monitoring traffic and ask whether the incoming traffic act like enemy traffic anomaly based nits and nips employ heuristic to help he determined whether what comes in as traffic is a threat this this is where artificial intelligence shows its face because your nits and nips can train itself by gradually changing filters and rules about what is acceptable and if need if it needed will adjust itself so the major drawback of anomaly based detection and prevention is that the trend to be a high number of false positive this could translate into good traffic being detected as bad or developer activity getting blocked because it seems abnormal so and then inline and passive so inline and passive is aside 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 is from monitoring versus protection as explained above so uh this portion of nips nips and nits highlight another major difference between the two security system so this is one is inline and the other is passive nip is considered an inline network security solution inline refers to being in between the firewall and the rest of the network environment what is what this does is allow nips to monitor net incoming traffic and its ports as signature match or anomaly then it take then it can take proactive action to stop or mitigate the incoming threat the inline positioning of nips is what gives it it opportunity for action before incoming traffic hits the network so nits on the other hand is a passive network uh, security solution it may sit on the inner network side of a firewall on the dm dmc or the wan side or placement uh, placement on either dmc or inner network as preferable that will make less noise so uh, the third one the last uh, the other one is the inborn and so outborn so the inborn outbound is also similar to that similar to that uh, the previous one and then rules a uh, rules is a uh, both nits and nips can rely upon rules also known as rule based detection to help them to detect and proactively stop suspiciously con uh, suspicious connections so the rules that nits and nips use allow them to differentiate between good traffic and suspicious traffic by comparing incoming traffic to a signature that are known to be either suspicious or malicious so rule based detection is used heavily by most nits and nips but is increasingly having to complete the other detection methods such as anomaly based 
as time goes on. The last one is analytics. So the two major issues regarding analytics are false positive and false negative. There are both different. So eat undesirables and can create problem and on uh, problems for an organization. So false uh, false positive, as I explained earlier, occurs when NIPS uh, blocks legitimate incoming traffic. This is problematic in the uh, in in that it can create a sort of self -inflic inflicted uh, DDoS where services denied to the legitimate customers. False negatives occurs uh, when either the needs or NIPS allows incoming traffic in that the, uh, that is a threat. So that what I explained earlier. So there's a very simple definitions. And then VPN connector, so concentrator. So the VPN concentrator. It, it, it allows us, uh, there's a two types, there's a site and site to site and host to site. So it's like the VPN is a connection between users and the LAN inside of a company where the users is employee who needs to connect to corporate networks from outside the company. This type of connection is used mainly telecommunicating or sales force uh, employee, sales force employee. Uh, who want to connect the corporate LAN from remote location. So the remote employee once they connected to the internet use the VPN client to connect to the corporate LAN. So the VPN client from uh, first connect to the VPN gateway server a yeah, network device located in the, DM, uh, in the DMC. The VPN gateway server authenticate the users and then create the virtual tunnel between the uh, remote host and the gateway for a second connection. So once the virtual tunnel is created, the channel becomes secure and the remote host can connect it to it to any server in the trusted network to sending data. So the type of remote provides secure, provide a secure encrypted communication between two parties that are connected via the internet. So this is the, uh, uh, the uh, there is a two two picture you can see on the right says host to host. Uh, the second one is a side to side. So the site, uh, the host to si host to host VPN, so uh, it's referred to the you know some the the first one is refers to the host to host, uh, and then it as a, as a remote with the one small change. So you can see that in the host to host VPN, two hosts are connected through a VPN tunnel. The tunnel, uh, so the tunnel is directly established between two hosts for a secure data transfer. Before the data transmission, the user is authenticated and the encrypted keys are exchanged between the two parties and the transmissions of the data begins. So the VPN tunnels ensure the data authenticity, data integrity, and data confidentiality. So the second one is a site to site. The site to site is a is connects one network to another network over the internet such as connecting remote branch office to a corporate headquarters LAN. So in this in these pictures you can see in this setup so the tunnel is created between the two VPN gateway. So the VPN gateway of the remote branch negotiates a connection with the VPN gateway of the corporate headquarters network and establish a establish a secure tunnel. So the net the remote host will will not have any VPN clients but they send normal TCP traffic through the VPN gateways. The VPN gateway is responsible for authentications of the users, networks, encryptions, in, uh, integrities and of uh, data. Once the VPN gateway receives the encrypted data, it scripts the header, decrypt the content and relies normal data toward the target host inside the trust network. So thus the VPN, the VPN tunnel is created between two sites allowing the company network and resource available to the remote location uh, locations so this solutions is ideal for small office located in the remote parts of the world so this the third one is uh, the vpn concentrated single device of single device to funnel all we all vpns access connect vpn nodes encryption encrypted tunnels centralized authentication they use the protocols so the network security through encryption IPsec and SSL we will talk about this later later on topic so IPsec so IPsec is a is a group of protocol that are used together to set 
uh, set up encrypted connection between device. It helps keep data sent over public network secure. IPsec is often used to set up VPNs and it works by encrypting IP packets along with authentication, authenticating the source where the packet come from. So how do, how uh, how does okay how do users connect to an IP VPN normally you know so so we, we can talk about this so users can access an IP IPsec VPN by logging into VPN application or client so this typically requires the user to have installed the applications on that device so VPN logins are usually password based while data sent over VPN data uh, v, uh, uh, which means so we, we so this means that we it won't allow you to steal it just encrypting the connections so let's say so using a two-step uh, uh, two-factor authentication can strengthen IPsec VPN security since stealing a passwords alone with no longer given attacker access so I so normally that uh, there is a three you can see the how does IP IPsec works the IPsec connections include the following steps so authentications encryptions key exchange transmissions packet headers and trailers decryptions so the authentications so first uh, we can talk about the authentications uh, authentications the IPsec provide authentications for each package like a stamp uh, stamp of authentic authenticity is on a call uh, collectible items the, these ensure the packet are from trusted source and not an attacker encryptions IPsec IPsec encrypts the payloads within each package and each package IP headers uh, so this keep this keep data sent over IPsec uh, IPsec secure and private and third one key exchange so key exchange is a keys or necessary for encryption so a key is a string of random characters that can be used to a lock unlock and meaning, meaning lock means encrypt unlock means decrypt message so IPsec sets up a key with a uh, key exchange between the connected device so that the each device can decrypt the other other device message. The third one is a transmission. So transmission is a encrypted IPsec packet travels across one or more uh, network to uh, to the destination using a transport protocol. At this stage, IPsec traffic differs from irregular IP traffic in and it most it most often uses UDP as it is transport protocols rather than TCP so TCP is set set up sets up uh, dedicated connections between devices and ensure that all packets arrive UDP is doesn't set up the described connections is IPsec uses UDP because this is allow IP, IPsec packet to get through firewall third one is a package header and trailers so that this one is a package header and trailer is all about that it that is sent over a network is broken down into similar sorry smaller pieces called packets packet contain both a payload or the actual data being sent headers or information about the data so that the computer receiving the packets know what to do with them IPsec adds several header to data packet containing authentication and encryption information IPsec also adds trailers which go after each package payloads instead of before so the last one is a decryption so decryption is at the at the other uh, other end of communication the packet or decrypted an application example browsers can now use a deliver deliver data so what protocols are used in ip6 so in this network a protocol is specified a way of formatting data so that the so that any networked computers can interpret interpret the data so IPsec, IPsec is not one protocol but a suite of protocols the following protocols make up the IPsec, IPsec suite so authentication header so authentication header is ensures that data are from trusted source and the data has not been tempered with so it's, it's like a tempered proof proof tempered proof seal on a consumer product these headers do not provide any encryptions they do not help conceal the data from attacker second one encapsulating securing protocol 
So ESP encrypts the IP headers and the payload of each packet unless transport mode is used, in which cases it only encrypts the payload. ESP adds its own header, uh, uh, own header and a trailer to each data packet. Third one, security associati associations. SCA refers to a number of protocols used for negotiating the encryption keys and algorithm. Uh, one of the most common SCA protocol is Internet Key Exchange (IKE). There is also one more, the IP Internet Protocol. It's not part of IPsec suits. IPsec runs directly on top of IP. SSL and TLS VPN. So SSL, uh, most of you are aware of it. The SSL, the secure socket layer standard, the secure socket layers, and TLS is a transport layer security so no TLS replaces SSL is a is a known as web VPNs remote access through websites over SSL and a TLS so point to point encryption and then that this this TLS is, is a very new one the we can the latest one is a 3.0 TLS is a successor protocol to SSL. The TLS is uh, TLS TLS is an improved version of SSL. It works in much the same way as the SSL, using encryption to protect the transfer to data and information. So the the two terms are often used interchangeable in the industry, although SSL is still widely used. So VPN tunnel, what is it and how does it work? So the VPN tunnel is encrypted link between your device and another network. So we can learn more about how a VPN works by looking at the process of tunneling, da tunneling data. Okay, so VPN tunnel works by encapsulating data in an encrypted data packet. The act of putting the postcard into an envelope with its one address is equivalent to encapsulations and when you do this, with the data on the internet, you create a virtual private tunnel, commonly called VPN tunneling. So how does the VPN tunneling works? So to connect the internet through a VPN tunnel, you will first have a sign up with the virtual private network service, better known as VPN. So meaning, so the VPN is key to hiding your IP address and shielding your online activity from snoops. Before visiting websites, you will log into your VPN provider services. So when you then start searching online, the website you visit and your own internet service provider, ISP on short, you can say that. So won't see, they won't see your IP address. Instead, they will see IP address of your VPN provider, helping to protect your privacy. In essence, for example, when you click on a link or download file from a site, no one will know it is your activity it is as if your if your vpn provider has built a tunnel around your online activity providing a barrier between it and everyone else using a vpn alone may not be enough to protect your online privacy through even though so they th that is why the vpn provides take one more steps encrypt the data you send and receive while you are online when your data is encrypted it is crumbled so snoops cannot intercept and dis decipher decipher it so when you enable decipher means as a, as a type of algorithm so when when you enable this add layer of pro uh, protections hackers business governments or others won't be able to track what sites you visit so file you download so video uh, video you stream or online games you play Hiding your IP address and encrypting the data you send and receive is a powerful combination to help keep your online browsing sessions private. So exam preparation. Which, which of the following tunneling configuration is the process of allowing a remote VPN users to access a public networks at the same time that the user is allowed to access Origination, origination, originational resources. Answer. Splitting tunnel. 
exam preparation too so this type of firewall process or blocks traffic to specific ports or IP address based on predetermined rules answer packet filtering okay that's it guys for today video that's it guys for this video so please subscribe my channel press the bell button share the videos if you like uh, press the thumb, thumbs up button thank you so much